privilege to introduce a very, very good friend of mine, Mr. Ed Rush. Now, Ed is my coach, so coaches need coaches. I've found that when you are working on offers, when you are working on a flow, when you're trying to figure out who you're speaking to, we all get myopic. And having someone to bounce an idea off of is unbelievably invaluable. That's another reason why we strongly encourage just get involved and get involved inside the community, joining the Facebook group, because you're going to have people who are going to look at something, maybe spot a little tweak or a little error, or something that you need to make. But in this case, what Ed's going to do right now is he's going to coach you through preparing a real hooky hook and also what it takes to create an extremely compelling offer. So my suggestion and recommendation to you is look at this through the lens of what it is that you want to sell right now, whether it's for you or a client, even if you want to pitch, and think about using his formula and his format to either implement or when you work with your own clients and customers as a coach or a consultant, how can you leverage everything that Ed's about to share with you now? So this is Mr. Ed Rush. Thank you, sir. Right, Thank you. All right. Appreciate it, bud. Yeah. All right. Ready to rock and roll if you are say hoorah? hoorah? All right, cool. Imagine what it would be like to have someone email you in the middle of the night, like frantically, frantically wanting to get your product so bad they can't seem to get into the shopping cart but they want it so bad that they email and they call support and they email again and then they try you on skype imagine what that would be like okay let me just tell you that's hard to do but when you do it oh my goodness you open up the door to an incredible five six in certain cases seven figure income and so today we're going to talk about how to create an offer that's so good that you literally grab people by their eyeballs and bring them in through your sales process Statistics are telling us right now that people are bombarded with anywhere between 500 to 5,000 marketing messages every single day. Actually, if you just took walking in here through the hotel, you probably saw about 10 or 15 different marketing messages. Okay, maybe a car rental, maybe it was for the restaurant, maybe it was something that came up on your phone, maybe you're checking your Facebook. Those things are just coming to us all the time right now. I mean, it never used to be like that without TV, without radio, without a lot of media. People were put in front of a salesperson to listen to one offer that day. And it was, it was only that, it was yes or no. So like we live in this world where there's just the constant bombardment and it's your job to put an offer in front of somebody that's so good that they literally drop everything and make it their mission or goal in life to go buy what you have to offer, okay? And it's hard, but when you do it right, it can actually become a lot easier when you start following some formulas. I'm gonna just outline it for you, by the way. I'm going to outline a step-by-step -step formula for you in this segment. It can be amazing. Now, I'm reading this book right now. It's actually a series of four books, and I can't remember the exact, um, the ac exact author's name, but, the, but it's a book about a guy who can read minds. And so what this guy can do, the first, the first book actually is, is called The Mind Readers. And this guy can stop time. And then what he does is he finds himself outside of himself, and he can walk over to somebody and touch them, and he can actually he can actually see what they're thinking. Now, how many of you, by the way, you could, wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> actually, I don't know. I, I was reading, I was thinking about it. I'm like, I don't know if I, I don't know if I have thick enough skin to be like, all right, stop time and then go, you know, and, and I, I, I touch one of you in the audience and it's like, man, I wish you would get to the point, you know? <laughs> he says, I'm um, a lot, you know, and he's got his hands in his pockets and gee, wh no. So, I mean, you know, you got probably the th th pretty thick skin if you're going to be the, b the mind reader. But wouldn't it be amazing from a marketing perspective? Like, think about it. You're up on stage, okay, and you're about to make your offer. And you can stop time and walk around the room and go and see what everybody's thinking. And you can hear people go, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not really an expert. Or you hear someone go, man, that sounds really interesting what he's teaching, but I, I need a list. I'm sure I need a list before I can take advantage of his product. Or, hey, Mike, that's great, but... I don't know much about technology. Wouldn't it be great to be able to read your prospects' minds and know exactly what they're saying? Well, good marketing actually is exactly that. And I'm going to show you how we did this in a recent promotion. We literally, no, not literally, we read minds, okay, using intuition, using what we know from our marketplace, using chat on a webcast, using ask, asking some, some surveys. I, uh, some of you know I used to be a fighter pilot in the Marine Corps, and when we used to do dogfighting, which is one against one airplanes flying against each other, it was kind of like a chess match. And for those of you who are really good at chess, you know, you're thinking like four, 
five, six moves ahead of time. In fact, I think you can define my chess skill. I have an eight-year-old son who's actually really sharp, uh, very good at math, and, and I'm about a year ahead of him at chess, maybe. So like when he's nine, he and I will be playing chess, which he likes to do, and he will probably beat me legitimately for the, f that's how bad I am at chess, okay? And so I'm not great at chess. I was great at dogfighting airplanes. And when we used to do this, what we would do is we'd start, two airplanes would start completely neutral. We'd pass each other at about, I don't know, nine or 900,000 miles an hour worth of closure. And we'd make our initial turn. And at that first turn, I would start thinking, because I was one of the best, at the top head of my career, I was one of the best in the entire Marine Corps. Actually, I was the leading instructor in the Marine Corps for that kind of aerial combat. And at that first turn, I would start to think about two, three or four turns down the road. And here's why. The F-18 at its maximum turn rate could do about 70 degrees per second worth of turn. That's really fast. That's 180 degrees in about three seconds. Okay, so, so with that turn, now think about it. This is an air, these are two airplanes facing each other. Most of the weapon systems are facing forward. So as we pass, neither one of us could typically shoot and the missiles certainly couldn't even turn that fast anyway. And, and we typically like to shoot in front of us, not behind us. Uh, okay, so the government goes to the lowest bidder, right? Okay, so these weapon systems, we like to keep a little safety margin in there, you know. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, so um, no offense to anybody uh, who works for Raytheon. All right, so, so we, would, we, we would like to think in terms of uh, two to three turns ahead, and 180 degrees is the difference between two planes like this and you being behind someone. That's three seconds. Now, I know in one move of an airplane, in one good move, I can close about a second. I can cl close about 70 degrees. So how many good, solid moves do I need to make to be able to get behind someone? Three. And so I'm thinking two or three or four moves ahead, and that's what you're doing in marketing. Okay, you're starting to think two or three or four um, moves ahead. And so the way to think about your offer is like this. There's, there's two different ways to think about it, but you have to think about it both ways. I heard John Carlson, who's like a famous copywriter, talk about this. He pictures his person that he's marketing to as this gigan gigantic sonambulant sloth, okay, that's sort of l laid out on their couch, okay, and, they, and it's really hard for this person even to get up, and they're flipping through the TV channels, and as they're flipping through the TV channels, John Carlton said, my offer needs to be so good that I need to get this person off of their couch and across their room to pick up the phone and actually make a phone call. That's how good your offer needs to be. Okay, another way to think about this is... Um, like right now, you have a lot of priorities in your life. Your kids, your family, your friends, your, your loved ones, your grandkids, the folks who are working back in the office, what's happening with your business right now, what kind of sales are coming in. But if you were to have like a catastrophic injury and cut like your carter, carter what's it called? Car carotid, I just finally like pronounced that word. Carter, carotid artery. What would be the most important thing in your life? Stop the bleeding. Now, all this stuff would go away. You wouldn't check your Facebook, you wouldn't check your email, you wouldn't see what's happening with sales, all that stuff would go away. And so your job as a marketer is to get that to the top of the list. Like right next to Stop the Bleeding, most important thing in someone's, someone's life. We have people on our webcast, and you've been, you've been with us before, we'll do, Mike and I will do eight to 10 hour webcasts. We have people who will stay with us for eight to 10 hours. Why? Because it's the most important thing for them that particular day, and I would happen to agree with them. I'm there for eight to 10 hours, okay? They might as well be too. And so I'm gonna give you some numbers from a recent promotion that we did, and I'll just, uh, I, I just, I'm setting the context because I want to show you what can happen when you create a phenomenal offer, okay? And it's an offer that actually is the reason why so many of you are here. By the way, are you glad you came? Yeah, I'm glad you came too, okay? So do you see, when you put together a great offer, you benefit, your, you benefit you and your company, you benefit other people, okay? When you put together a really good, really good offer, I'm gonna show you exactly how to deliver on, on what people really need and how to also give them what they want. But let me just show you some examples here. This is um, as recent as uh, last night at midnight, okay? And so this is 139 sales. You can see that on the bottom left corner of Webcast Profit Toolkit, which is the program that you are observing right now, okay? And the total gross sales was $289,187 in five days using two webcasts, that were each about two hours long. Not even, and some of you watched those this week, by the way. So, so, so look at the numbers down at the bottom. I'll give you some, some uh, idea of what these numbers mean. Um, EPC means earnings per click. That means for the number of people that clicked an email, a link in their email or in social media, every time someone clicked, $30.85 went to sales. 
Okay, I don't know how much you know about that number, but that's a great number. EPR is earnings per registrant. That's the number of people that registered for the webcast. Per registrant, $74.65. Now this last number is the one, we did this promotion with Andy Jenkins and Mike Philsame, if you're, if you're familiar with them, two of the best marketers on the planet. Okay, and I was just talking to Mike Philsame this morning, $157.48 is earnings per attendee. That means even if someone showed up for five seconds on your webcast and then hit, hit close in their browser, they were an attendee. And per attendee, on our webcast, Wednesday and Friday, combined attendees, $157.48. How many of you would like to earn $157 every time somebody attends, attends your webcast? Okay, those are legitimately real numbers. I pulled them out of a spreadsheet about, about 35 minutes ago. And as I was talking to Mike Phil Same on Skype, he told me, and I'll quote him because I asked his permission to do that. He said it's the highest EPA that he's ever seen for any webcast that they've ever done. Okay, so I'm here to tell you that we know what we're doing, and I'm going to show you the same exact methodology. In fact, I'm going to show you the actual slides we used in that presentation, and, and then we're going to do you the benefit of uploading those as a PDF to your membership site so that you can see some of the things that we did. Okay, so grab a pen and start writing some stuff down because I'm going to show you from the back all the way forward how we created an offer that straight up, flat out worked. You ready for that? If you are, say hoorah. <laughs> all right, cool. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go back into... Um, I'm going to go back to the whiteboard here, and I'm going to walk through the components of an offer. And I'll just say, as I start this out, um, this is not an exhaustive list, okay? But these are the minimum things that you need. I'll show you what things you may or may not need that may be optional, but this is the minimum what you need to create an offer that's really compelling, okay? So now, really quickly, you're going to be tempted to think about, uh, as I'm doing this, you're going to be tempted to think, well, okay, I get all that stuff, but I can't really do that because my market is different or... Um, no, no, but I get that thing, but you see, my people are way more sophisticated, okay, than this. Or, or I just said, hey, um, we have people who spend eight to ten hours on a webcast, and sometimes I'll mention that to one of our marketers, um, and, I s and they'll, sit, they'll look at me and go, yeah, I would never do that. And therefore, they think no one will listen to them for eight or ten hours on their own webcast because they won't do it. Okay, one of the biggest fundamental fallacies in the world of marketing is this. You are not your market. There's a reason why they're coming to you. You know? Like, there's a reason why martial arts uh, gym owners come to Lloyd Irvin. And there's a reason why fitness people want to get in shape um, come to Marcy. Okay? There's a reason why people who want to do rent-to-own real estate come to John McCabe. The reason why is because they want to be like you because they are not you. Okay? So stop saying, oh, well, I would never be on that. No, no. No, you're not your market. There's a reason why they're coming to you, which brings me to the first one, which is you need to have a reason why. That's where the offer starts. Okay, now, does it need to be an exhaustive list of all the reasons why you're marketing this product? No, in fact, it never should be. Why? Because one of the reasons you're marketing the product is what? So that you can make money, okay? And I'll just tell you, for the most part, we don't use that as a reason why in our marketing, okay? We will say something like, hey, there was this new change on uh, YouTube Live and Google+, Plus, which gives you a strategic advantage in the marketplace, and to update you on the change and to show you what's happening now, we're going to have a webcast on Friday from noon to, to 2, okay? That's a reason why, not, um, hey, so uh, the month of May is kind of coming too close, and well... We really haven't made as much money in this month as we would have liked to. And to cover some of our income goals for this month, we're going to have a webcast. We're going to sell you some stuff. It's going to be great. Come on and join us, okay? That's a reason why. It's just not a good marketing reason why. Are you with me on that? Okay, good. As long as we got that covered. Like, so here's some another reason why. Hey, yesterday, our webcast, uh, Google kicked us off the webcast. We had 700 attendees. And actually, this happened last Friday. We had an issue with, um, with our streaming with Google Hangouts. So for 20 minutes... We had a webcast that went for 20 minutes that, that half of our attendees couldn't see the screen. We stopped. We refreshed the entire thing. Everyone came back. Actually, uh, Mike and Andy actually mailed a second time. We actually doubled our attendee f attendance from what we had before, which is really rare. And we ended up starting the whole thing over again. That would be a great reason for us to say we're extending this offer until, until midnight. You get the bonuses, which is exactly what we did. We just knew some people weren't there. And so we said, hey, look. The bonuses that were good for this period of time, we're going to extend those to midnight to honor some of you who weren't able to get onto the webcast. That's a phenomenal reason why. Okay, another great way to make a reason why, you've heard this too. You've heard this, which is a story, your story. 
So think about this particular product. In the beginning of this product, Mike tells, uh, Mike, Mike will tell a story about how he kind of got into marketing, how he did a number of launches, and then he, and then he goes kind of down, and he tells a really deep personal story about what? What's the story that you hear him tell very often? The story about how he got cancer, okay? And I was, I was in Duke Medical Center. This is part of the story. Now, people are engaged because story is something that people really can connect to. And then what he says is, and by the way, I was able to put my business on autopilot. We're able to make this much money using webcasts. And this last year, I was able to sell my company to a publicly traded company, and I was able to start over again. We've used this in our, in our copy before. And then we say, what would you do, by the way, if you could just start over again and money wasn't an object? This is exactly what he says. He says, here's what I decided to do. I decided this technology is so important that I was betting it all on, this, on webcasts. I was betting it all on webcasts, and I'm choosing you now. Because I'm choosing to work with people like you who are interested in making a difference for our coming generation. That's a reason why, okay? And that's part of your marketing message. And so start to think about what, what your reason why might be. It might be your story of transformation. It might be your story of divorce. It might be that you're out of shape and now you're in shape. It might be that you're broke and then all of a sudden you figured out some new real estate hack or trick that you can wanted to share with other people. There's your story. There's a reason why. You with me? If you are, say hoorah. hoorah. All right, number two is like your core um, course or your uh, service. This is basically what you're going to give them. And in a moment, I'm going to back up and just sh share with you how you come to this using reverse engineering your offer. Um, but this is number two. This is just what you're giving them. Now, when it comes to the deliverable, we don't talk about this much. In fact, we don't barely say anything at all except for something like, and the series comes as a, as a group of CDs and DVDs and audio sets and a membership site. Or we'll say, um, you get a membership site with all the information, and then we'll talk more about that. Because think about it. Think about it this way. How many people wake up in the morning and they're like, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen today, but I need some more CDs. I just need some more, <laughs> maybe a manual. I'd love it if they wrapped it in plastic. That would be great if they just wrapped it all up in plastic and just sent it to me. No, nobody ever says that. What do they do? They wake up in the morning. Let's say they, they're interested in real estate investing. Okay? They wake up in the morning and they're like, what? What's the first thought that crosses their mind? Can't okay, just make some more money. Got to make, got to pay the bills this month. Got to make some money. So if you can connect your marketing message to that conversation going on in someone's head, you can make money too. Okay. So this is the re reason why we don't like. There's a lot of folks who invest in our products. We've had over over. Um, I don't remember the number. 260, 270 people in the last month, month and a half invest in Webcast Profit Toolkit. A lot of you, when you invested, you didn't even totally know exactly what all the stuff you were getting, right? In fact, a lot of times people are like, hey. I, They'll walk to the back table, and I'll be back there, and they're like, all right, man, I'm in. I don't know what I'm getting, but I'm sure it's going to be good, <laughs> right? So how many of you did, did that, by the way? I see, it happens to me all the time, all right? It's, especially in our community, because you know, all right, it's going to be a good training. I don't know what it is, okay? But you're like, I don't know what this is, but I'm signing up because you guys, I know it's going to be good. All right, so, so uh, that's great. Uh, aren't you glad you're here? Yeah. Thank you for trusting us with this. We got more to come, okay? And so the core, um, core course or service. Now, um, this is when we get into the next segment, which is just the bonuses. Here's what I use for bon bonuses for, and I'm going to talk about objection countering in just a little bit, but bonuses are a great place to counter some objections that people might have. So let me give you an example. One of the common objections we get for doing webcasting, in fact, it's probably true for just about every single person who does webcasting, is, ah, I don't really like the way that I look on camera. Or I don't really like the way my voice sounds. Or I'm afraid I'm making some big mistake on camera. That's a pretty common objection. Let me tell you, I don't care how uh, great looking you are. Just about everyone I know has that. Like, have you, ever, have you ever seen yourself on video accidentally? Like, you didn't, like, start the video and you're like, okay, I'm prepared to watch myself. Have you ever just, like, it started playing? That happened to me last week. I, my, I pulled my, one of my websites up and it started playing and I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's horrible. I'm like, I look horrible. Okay, but that's the, we're all like that. We're all our worst critic. And so one of the bonuses inside of this program is how to look and, great, look, look and feel great on camera even if, the, w even if you hate the way you look on camera. Why is that bonus in there? Because we know someone's thinking about that. So you could get someone to the point where they're ready to go invest $2,000 with you. Everything's great. They love the benefits. They want it in their life. They want to do webcasts, but they're sitting there and they're thinking, I just, I don't, I don't look on a camera though. I don't like myself on camera. So therefore, I, I don't think I should do this course. Everything could be in line, but one objection. And so part of your job as a marketer is to counter some of the objections. We use the bonuses for that. 
Okay, number four is your price. Now, some of you have told, heard me speak on offers before. What comes right after price? Always, 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 no exception to this, ever, 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 always, always, always. There's price, then price, justification, okay? Do not make this mistake. I was working with a guy who is um, one of the best speakers in the world, and I was working with him. One of the things I do is I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program where you walk into my office, we spend five hours together, we redo your entire offer so that you can go out and actually sell a whole bunch of stuff. And this guy came into my office. It actually, wasn't even five hours. It was three hours, about three and a half that I spent with him. And he was, he had, he had these events where 200 to 250 people came. He would sell his mastermind program. By the way, he's already given me a testimony that I play uh, live. So Bo Eason is the guy's name, all right? I just realized he, he gave me something to play in front of everyone. I'm not going to play it. But, but so Bo was doing it about, about 150 to $200,000 worth of sales at his events to the people who were coming to his events. He came in. We spent three hours together. And he left, and the next event, he sold over $600,000 worth of coaching, over a four times increase. One of the, and, and by the way, I didn't do much to his talk because he's an amazing speaker. What I did was I did some things with his offer, and this is one of the biggest things that I did. I hear speakers, and I hear people who, who present on webcast make this mistake all the time, all the time, all the time. Anytime you mention the price, you always have to justify your price. And when I mean always, I mean every time. Okay, and the reason why is because you're talking to two different minds. Remember, there's an emotional mind and a rational mind. Okay, so here's the way that you think about this. The emotional mind, if you make a compelling enough argument and you create enough benefits in their mind of the things that are going to change in their life, the emotional mind's like, I am totally in, Ed. I'm on board with this. And the rational mind's like, okay, I know that you're on board with this, but is your wife going to be on board with this? Okay, that's what the emotional mind says. Or... Yeah, but last time your husband looked at the credit card statement and he kind of got upset and then you couldn't explain why you bought. That's what the rational mind is thinking. Like the rational mind isn't like, no, the rational mind is just like, give me something to say to my wife. That's what the rational mind is saying. Or, or just give me a reason I can tell my accountant that I did this again, right? That's what the rational mind is saying. That's what price justification is for. You're talking to this person over here. Okay, so price justification would go some, some, something like this. And by the way, when I do the uh, made-up marketing speak, I usually just make it up on the fly just to show you that you can do this even when you're on the fly on a webcast. Okay, oh, I forgot price justification. Price justification would go something like this. Now, the investment in webcast profit toolkit, even though the normal price is $4,567, the investment today is just $1,997. Or if you want to do a three pay, you can do a three pay of seven twenty seven. dollars means you get in for less than three hundred seven hundred thirty dollars which is an amazing deal. Now, just think about this. So here we go into price justification. And I guarantee you've heard me and Mike do this about 100 times. Now, just think about this. Let's just say you do one webcast. And let's just say your product is just $500. Now, we might teach you to do something more than that, $1,000, $2,000. But let's just say it's five, like your, pro your product was what, Andy? 500 bucks, okay? And how many did you sell after you work with Mike and I? So 32 at 500. So there's an example, 32 times 500. And I'm, I'm a Marine, so somebody's got to help me with that. 16000 something? 16000 is that right? Yes. $16,000. So let's just say you do one webcast, and let's say you, you don't even do as good as Andy did. All he did was do what we told him and send the emails out that we told him to do, which we provide for you, by the way. And, and I think you know this, but we just uploaded a whole bunch of new email copy into this membership portal that you can use and copy and use like today. It's there. I just saw it this morning. It looks great. It's formatted great. Okay, so it's all there for you. So let's just say that you use that, that email copy that we use, and your product is 500 bucks. And instead of selling 32, you just sell six. Now there's math I can do. How many is six times 500? $3,000. Let's say you do that not every month. Let's say you do it every other month because you just got another job and, and, a, and a life. How much is that? Six times a year times 3,000. How much is that? $18,000. You invested $2,000. You made $18,000. That's a nine to one return on your investment. And look, I'm not even an investment advisor, but I can tell you your stockbroker can't beat that. He can't beat that. And everything else is yours to keep, plus you've got the knowledge on how to do it again. Do you see why that's such a deal? If you do say hoorah, hoorah. that's price justification. Now some of you are like, yes, I knew I came here for a reason. That's why you do it, okay? And that's the importance of creating that, okay? Now I know uh, an objection is like, okay, I get it, but my course doesn't help people make money. There's always a way to make price justification work. I've done it in how to be a fighter pilot market where I've said, look, you spent $50,000 a year on college. Why don't you spend $97 on the actual job that you're actually going to have? That's price justification. 
Okay, I've worked with basketball referees, and I taught them about the prestige of being on the game, and what would that feel like to be, in, to be finally on the Division I level refereeing the Final Four? That's price justification. What would that be worth? Okay, you with me on that? If you are, say hoorah. All right, number six, guarantee. Um, with one exception, I will recommend that you always have a guarantee. In fact, if you're taking people's credit cards, you're in the guarantee business whether you like it or not. Okay, because if someone asks for a guarantee and you're like, there's a, guy, a marketer out there I know that's like, I don't give guarantees. I'm like, yeah, you do. Because like you ask, when someone asks for it, you say no, then they go to their credit card company and say they wouldn't give me my money back. And the credit card company goes and takes the money back. Okay, so you might as well be bold about this. And so we make a big deal about the guarantee. Look, if you're not totally blown away, just return it. You'll get a full refund and we can still be friends, which is true. If, look, if you're not the kind of person that implements and you're not the kind of person that sees the value in, in these great ideas, like you got, just in the time that we've spent in these, these first few modules, I guarantee you've got at least one idea that you can go and make at least $2,000 and get your investment back. I guarantee that's true. You probably got it already written down. But if you're, look at how I'm marketing this, by the way. You like this? I'm demonstrating this for you, by the way. Now, if you are not the kind of person who sees the value or who can't implement, that's fine. We just want you to ask for a refund because we don't want a bunch of people out there not implementing the course. That's how I'd word the guarantee. You with me on that? Because what I do is we draw clean lines. You're either over here with us or you're over here and you're not with us, which is totally fine, whichever one you want to do. Okay, that's the guarantee. Number seven is uh, urgency or scarcity. This is a must. This is missing in almost every single offer that I see when I, see, when I first see it. There has to be a reason for them to buy right now. Okay, that couples really qu quickly with number eight, which is a deadline. You will not see Mike and I do an offer that doesn't have a deadline. There are a lot of reasons for that. One of them is like, we got a class here starting on Monday. You got to enroll if you, if you want to do that. But we have deadlines. The reason we have deadlines is people don't take action without a reason to take action. If your offer is sitting there and it's always available to them whenever they want, guess when they'll get around to it? Never. Okay, you got them all excited, you got them in the, in the offer, you got them really kind of going, kind of going, all motivated, and then they find out they can do it whenever, and they're like, I'm still going to do it. Of course, I'm going to take your thing, Ed, no problem. I'm just kind of like, do it when it's appropriate for me and my business. No, no, because we have people, occasionally we'll have someone ask, hey, I don't really want to do webcasting right now, uh, but I'm thinking about doing it in, in the future. Will this offer be available later? Okay, and we'll just say, look, here's the thing. This program is for implementers, and even if you're not going to do it, right now, invest in it right now, because your eyes might open to some opportunities that you really do want to uh, implement right now. Okay, so urgency, scarcity, this is an extra bonus. This is some time with you. This is like for some, some of you, um, you're going to give people maybe some one-on-one -on -one time or maybe a consulting, extra consulting session, uh, or you're going to give them something else that's coming in the box. You might give them a free book or a signed book or a chance to come to a, a live event instead of coming to a virtual event. Those are all ideas that you can do for urgency and scarcity. We just, we'll just change it, deadline, Put a new one in there, rotate it, new deadline, okay? Just, just know that you're going to sell a lot more. That was one of the first things we, d we did on that phone call with Andy, uh, um, with Andy when we did, I don't remember, it was in December or something like that. We talked on the phone for 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, and, the fr and that's what I said. I said, hey, just do a deadline, do the same offer, do a deadline, it doubled sales. Which, by the way, when you do a deadline, guess what you're going to do? You're going to double sales when you have a deadline. Does that mean that the offer, you can never offer the offer ever again? No, no, no. Just change something, or you can extend the offer if you have a what? Reason why. Because there, there are some times, like, look, if your website goes down, is it possible that your website might go down? It happens all the time. So instead of getting upset about it, just go, great, now I have a reason why. Open it up for another week. All right, you with me on that? If you are, say hoorah. All right, last one, hugely important one. I see this missed all the time, which is what? C-T-A, which stands for call to action. So you'll hear people at the end of a webcast, and I'm going to talk about, about this more in an upcoming segment about actually doing the pitch and how to do it. But you'll hear people who will go, okay, so now um, if you're interested in investing in the program, uh, there's a button below, and uh, you're welcome to go and view that and check out the options on the uh, payments. that are. What's the word in that sentence that drives me crazy? If. It's not if. Okay, that is a conditional. That means the mind is thinking, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Okay, here's what I say. Here's what I want you to do right now. Push the button below. Select the payment option that works best for you. Process your enrollment before the bonuses go away. Now, I just told them something really important, which is what, what I want them to do right now. 
Doesn't mean they have to, but that's what I want them to do right now. All right? Now, is this helpful for you? All right, we'll take, just remember all the stuff's in the membership area. In fact, when I get done, I'll flip this back down there. If you, if you miss some of the notes, you can write all that stuff down. All right, now, the last thing I'll talk about is, um, is how to develop your offer. I just told you what an offer is, and, and incidentally, sometimes uh, we get a common question, which is, what is an offer? Here's the really easy definition of, of an offer. An offer is what you want them to do. So if you want them to buy your product, that's your offer. If you want them to opt in to your web, website and give you their name and email address, that's your offer. Okay, so, so for example, one of, the, one of the most powerful ways to use webcasts is to, to get on a webcast and give someone an offer to do something for free. Like they can come on and they can get a special report, or they can get a free webcast with you, or they can do a series of trainings with you. So like one of the things that we encourage folks to do sometimes when they join us in our network, Mike mentioned that earlier, we're going to build a webcast network of folks like you who we're going to join up, join up with and broadcast you to our market. Okay? And one of the things that we're going to encourage you to do is put together a really good offer that gets people to come to your website and, and give you their name and email address so that you can start that relationship. Okay? So typically, the first time someone sees you, they typically won't buy from you, but that's an opportunity to build a list and get a relationship. And that's, that's, that's an offer. Okay? So now, how do you develop an offer? And this will be my, the last segment. Um, but the first thing that you do, and this is really, really important, and like so critically important that you can't do any of the other stuff unless you start here, which is you start at desire. Do you sell people what they want or what they need? What they want, okay? So you sell what they want. Do you deliver what they want or what they need? You deliver what they need, okay? And incidentally, they're the same thing. So when you sell someone what they want and deliver something they need, they get what they need so that they get what they want. So, so we're not bait and switch here. It's just that this, is, is, um, this will take implementation. This was a strategic strike on that thing that flew across the thing there. Um, this is how you get them to, to do what they, what, or to, to take action. Okay, so let me give you an example. Um, some of you know I like to fish. And so um, I, I kind of, and you've experienced this, I'm sure, with a hobby or with a vacation. Like, do you ever decide to go on a vacation and then all of a sudden you find, like, all, your, all day you're spending on these websites, like, looking at this place, looking at plane tickets and looking at hotels and stuff like that? Well, I decided there's this new technology for radar fish finders. And I'm kind of into radar because I've been flying around airplanes and stuff like that. And there's technology that I used to use in the airplane that now is available uh, for fishermen like me. And it's very high frequency, high intensity sonar. And so you can see like exactly what's underneath the boat. And so I, got, I was like, oh man, I'm really interested in one of these fish finder things that I can put underneath my boat. So I did, I did weeks of research. Like every time, you know, I had a little break, I'm like fish finder sonar reviews. And I was looking through, I was really interested in this. Now, let's talk, about, let's talk about desire for a minute. Did I want a fish finder? Not really. Not really. What did I really, really want? Okay, so you would think that, yeah, yeah, I want to catch big fish. That would, be like, that would be like marketing 101 and 201. The marketing team would get together and go, well, they don't really want a fish finder. They want to catch big fish. And they would say, Okay, so what we're going to market is catch big fish. That would be the marketing that we would come from, from that desire. Okay, but, but let's go a little bit deeper. Okay, here's really, this is really it. Now, I want you to picture you're on, uh, your market is laying in bed at night, and this is what I used to do. Okay, this is, true, this is a true story. Please um, do not think ill of me for this story. All right, um, I'm laying in bed, and I'm like, oh, I can't wait till I get that fish finder, man. It's going to be awesome. And then I picture that I have some buddies of mine from my church that we go fishing together, and I pictured uh, um, Chris and Ellis, it's two, two guys' names. We're out in the, out in the Pacific Ocean, and um, I'm working the sonar, driving, and we get over a couple little waves, and I see there's this school of bluefin tuna, which is basically off the coast right now, by the way. I can't believe I'm here. All right, so, um, so, so I see this school on the sonar, and I turn around, and I say, hey, boys, get ready, because you're about to catch some fish. And at that exact moment, bang, both rods go, boom, 
and they start reeling these fish in, and everybody's yelling, and then I'd get a fish on the boat, and we'd take pictures, and then when it's all done, and the dust settles, okay, and everything settles down, they both look up, and they're like, dude, dude, how did you know that? Okay, that's what I want. Are you with me? Okay, now, now, if you know that, is that going to be hard to market to me? No? All you need to do is tell me that story. All you have to do is just tell me the story and convince me that your gear is going to do that for me. Do you see why it's so important to start at desire? So now your job is to spend the time. This is not, this doesn't just happen like overnight. Okay, you spend the time. I usually go to like Starbucks or I'll go to some coffee shop or I'll sit in my office in my recliner, not at my desk where I've got access to email and interruptions. I'll turn my phone off and I'll sit there with a yellow pad of paper and I'll go, okay, what is it that they really want? Like, I mean, like really want. When they lay in bed at night, what is it that they really, really want? And if I spend a few hours on that, and I'm talking about a few hours, I'm like really getting into the mind of my prospect, really creating a lot of empathy and a connection with them and understanding with them, with their problems, I start to get to that, oh my goodness, you're talking about marketing messages. You start to connect with people where they're at, okay? So you've seen, occasionally some of you have seen, um, I'll be talking to a, 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 like one of our live events, and I'll be in, the, I'll be in sort of that, um, we're talking about your moment mode, and I'll go, you know, what would another, and just kind of be with me in this moment, so, so I'd say, what would another $10,000 mean to you right now? Actually, what would another $10,000 a month mean to you right now? And just think about that. What would it mean to you if every single month, on a pretty much passive income basis, there was another $10,000 every single month deposited in your bank account? That's like a nice house payment for two really nice houses. That's a fleet of cars if you wanted. That's a house payment and two cars if you wanted. Shoot, you could, pay for, you could pay for your kid's entire college fund in just two years and a good college. You could pay off debt. You could put money away. You could help a charity. Or after two months of just saving the, the $10,000, you could take the most amazing vacation to wherever you've been wanting to go, Europe for a month. You could go to the islands. You just want to sit on the beach with, oh, and just relax for the first time in your life. What would another $10,000 do in your life right now? Okay, so some of you, you, were you with me with that? By the way, I'm with me. Like, every time I do that, I'm like, oh, man, I could totally go to that beach. You know, the Mai Tai, yeah, woo, little, little, little umbrella. Like, I'm there. Okay, that's tapping into desire. That's where you start. If you don't do that, it does, look, it doesn't matter. You can have the right cameras. You can have the right setup. You can have a, a, a great uh, technology system. You can have a ton of people come to the show. If you don't start there, Okay, the offer will ultimately pro probably fall, fall on, um, on, on, um, on deaf ears. Okay, number two is to counter objections. Okay, now, once you've figured out, once you've figured out what, their, what their desire is, then you've got to get in their head again. You've got to do that mind reading thing that I talked about in the beginning, and you need to think two or three steps ahead, and you need to think, what is this person's negative self-talk now telling them? Okay, so for example, for Webcast Profit Toolkit, we sat down, and Mike and I built a whole whiteboard full of the objections. I'm going to show you these in just a second. One of the objections is I don't like technology. One of the objections is I don't have a product or a list. One of the objections is I don't like the way that I look on camera. One of the objections is I don't have a team. One of the objections is I'm not sure how to set all this up. One of the objections is I may look silly on, on camera. You start with the objections. Okay, once you get desire, you start with the objections. You think of all the reasons why they're going to come up with not buying. Oh my gosh, it sounds like a lot. It sounds really overwhelming. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through it. You start with all of those and you start writing all of them down. And then we'll take the top 5, 10, 15 objections. And let me show you really quickly on the screen what we do with those objections. Some of you have seen this before. Okay, this is, this is part of the presentation. And incidentally, this is teaching. Okay, so people aren't like, ah, this is just a bunch of, no, we're actually teaching people how to overcome these objections, but think about this. We say, what are the myths that you've been led to believe? Here, incidentally, what we don't say is, okay, now, here are some objections you're going to have to buying my product, which I'm going to sell to you in like 40 minutes, okay? We don't say that. We just say, here are some of the myths that you've been led to believe. Okay, myth number one, I don't have traffic or a list. Well, guess what? Webcasting, we found to be one of the most successful ways to build traffic and build a list. 
which is 100%. All this stuff's true, okay? Number two, I don't have a business or a product. Hey, one of the best news is, is a piece of news is that you can use webcasting to create a product. Myth number three, I don't like the way I look on camera. That's great. You know, people like connecting with real people who make mistakes. And so that'll give you additional connection. And obviously, we talked to these a little bit more than I'm. I'm not an expert or authority. Listen, none of us started out. Mike, me, JJ Virgin, John Asraf, Annie Jenkins, Mike Phil Sam. We all started out as regular people who used webcasting to create an authority and expert status for ourselves. All right, number, number five, I don't know how to get started. I'm overwhelmed with all the options. Listen, you do this cafeteria stuff. Did you hear me do that earlier today? Cafeteria, you got a bunch of things. You can choose whichever one you want. We're going to over-deliver. We're going to give you everything you need, um, but you may pick or choose um, as you go. Myth number six, I'm not technical. Myth number seven, I'm not good at copywriting. What do we say here, by the way? I'm not good at copywriting or marketing. What do we deliver in our product and the bonuses? Are we, I give you all the swipe. I wrote it all myself. I give you all the swipe files with a whole bunch of fill-in-the-blank stuff. You copy and paste and use it in your website, web, 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 uh, webcast. So in this part, I'll go, good. One of the things you're going to do then is you're going to find someone who understands copywriting, and you're going to ask them for examples in the swipe file so that you can use it and implement it in your market. What are we going to do later on in the offer? We're going to give them that. Okay, so do you see how you're starting to create even... This is one of the reasons why webcasting is so great, by the way, because most of the time, like if you're making an offer on a website to somebody who just clicks an ad and goes to your website, you have to assume their desire and sell to their desire. On a webcast, what can you do? You can actually create desire. Okay, that's creating desire. No one came to our webcast like, dude, all I want is a swipe file. But in that webcast, you're like, man, I need a swipe file. And then when you deliver the swipe file as a bonus, you get that. Okay, myth number eight, I hate selling, I don't know how to sell. Uh, myth number nine, I don't have a team. Myth number 10, this is the one where you say, my business is different. Uh, webcasting won't work for me. I live in Alabama, and we can't webcast from Alabama. I have two dogs, and nobody, I, I don't know anybody who webcasts that has two dogs. Okay, there's just a whole series of objections that, that you can put in there, and that's where you start. So you counter all those objections. Now, I'll just say this. You can do it in two places. You can do it in your presentation, or you can do it in your offer. What's the best place to counter objections? In the presentation, Why? Okay, so think about this. The moment you say, no, for a moment, let me just talk about this product that I'm going to offer you. What, what happens? Okay, the sales radar goes up, right? People are like, uh-uh, I'm not getting sold to today. No way. Not after what my wife told me last week. Okay, but they're like, oh, man. But the deadline's tonight, and I get all these bonuses. Oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, and so that's happening here. Sales radar's up. So if you're going to start countering objections, do it in your presentation. Do it in the context of your teaching. All those points right there are teaching points. Those are important to cover whether the person's going to invest in the product or not. Okay? And then the last thing is repeat. Okay? Make your offer over and over and over again. You know how many emails we send before, to promote one product one time in one week for one webcast? One. You know how many times we mail? We typically mail three, in certain cases, four times to get people to show up to the webcast. That's just to get people to register. Once they register, we'll mail two or three more times to remind the people who registered why they should show up for the webcast. Why, by the way, why do we do that? Why do we want them to show up to the webcast? $157 per attendee. So every one of those is very important. Okay, and like I said, you're glad you're here. You got some, many of you were here because you're an attendee. Okay, so I'm looking for people, I'm looking for uh, two to three emails. That's seven emails before we've even promoted it. When the webcast is over, we'll mail the replay or the, or the summary. Oh, by the way, I'm going to talk through copyright. I'm going to walk through the swipe file in, in a segment coming up. So you don't need to even worry about this too much. I'm just using this as an example. And then on the day of the deadline, on that last day, we'll mail minimum two, sometimes up to four times. And then I'll have somebody walk into my office and be like, hey, Ed, I did the webcast thing like you guys said to do. And it didn't work. And I started asking questions like, well, how many times did you mail? And they're like, well, I just, I just mailed them one time. Why would I mail them any other time than that? I mean, they already got the email. If they didn't want to come, then they wouldn't have registered. And I'm like, they didn't get your email. You know how few people actually got that email? You know, they, how, many, how few people actually read it? Or they'll say, well, they already saw the offer on the webcast. And of course, you're assuming that the person is staring at the camera or staring at their screen is like, Got it. I got everything, which is not true. What do people do during a webcast? They're like, let's check out Facebook for a sec, okay? Or they're like, sorry, hold on, I'm on a web, hold on. And then, and then you do the offer, and you just assume they just listen to your offer, 
Okay, so do it over and 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 remind them and remind them and remind them and remind them and remind them. And then when you get to the very end, what's the last thing you're going to remind them of? Muy importante. Starts with a D and it rhymes with deadline. Okay, yeah. You're going to remind them of the deadline over and over and over again. Okay, this is how you come up with an offer right here. Start at desire, counter objections, repeat. This is an offer right here. Okay, so take that, build this, and then go do what? Give it a shot. You go give it a shot. You give it your best shot. If it doesn't work, what, 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 it, what, if it doesn't work, let me just say this. When it doesn't work, the first time, what are you going to do? You can either get two choices. You can quit and say, oh, that stuff doesn't work. Or you can say, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to adjust. And this is what all of us have done. Every marketer has been successful. Okay, we all had our days where we were on camera for 20 minutes and nobody was listening. Okay, because Google Hangouts didn't, did, didn't work, you know? You're just going to do it again, and you're going to do it again, and you're going to do it again until you're successful. Are you with me on that? If you are, say hoorah. hoorah. All right, thank you very much.